brought to you by Kellogg's. The folks who bring the best to you each morning. A wide choice of cereals and the forms you like best. Yours from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning panel of What's My Line? First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And now we're very happy to welcome back to the panel a charming young man who's the star of the television show, Who Do You Trust? Mr. Johnny Carson. And on my left, the feminine part of the team that was just selected by the National Father's Day Foundation as the husband and wife team of the year. Uh, Martin couldn't be here, they just had a fight, but here is Arlene Francis. <laughs> <laughs> and now the darling of the publishing world and of our world, Mr. Bennett Cerf. And here's our distinguished panel moderator, whose constantly receding hairline <laughs> reveals an ever-expanding mass of unadulterated brain, John Charles Davis. <laughs> Now, you've got to admit that puts me in a pretty pickle, doesn't it? Said I got brains, but I'm losing my hair. Now, what do I take <laughs> objection to? Stuck. Handel, good evening. Johnny Carson, it's very nice to have you with us again, sir. Thanks, John. And uh, we're up to our usual tricks. We have some very interesting occupations, some very nice people who brought them to the theater, and we intend to give you as much trouble with both as we possibly can. Mm. We'll also have a... Famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the program, and we'll meet our first challenger after this word. And now let's meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? <laughs> Pamela? Proxa, right? Yes. Panel, I will announce that it is Miss Pamela Proxer, and with your permission, I will also announce that Miss Pamela is still studying as a student, but that uh, in all of her free hours away from her study, she has a very interesting occupation, which is what you're here to guess tonight. Uh, may I ask where you're from? Hagerstown, Maryland. Hagerstown, Maryland? Yes. That's not too far out of Washington, is no. it? No. Ah, fine. Uh, may I present the panel? Yes. Now, would you join me over here, please, Miss Parkser? You know how we keep score? Yes. Fine, then we'll let the audience here in the theater with us, and the audience looking at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Panel, we will tell you that Miss Proxa is salaried, deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Johnny Carson. Uh, Ms. Pro Proxa, is that right? Yes. Proxa. Uh, is your service available to both men and women, I hope? Yes, it is. <laughs> could I avail myself of it? And if I can't, could you tell me how I could? <laughs> uh, would I be willing, uh, I mean, would I be able to? Yes. Uh, do you, uh, stay in one location when you, uh, give your services? I mean, like an office, or do you move around? Yes. You do move around, you stay in the office. Excuse me, I was giving you two questions there. <laughs> you stay in one place? Actually, you've yes. got a yes there, and, and uh, I'd stick with the yes if I were you, Johnny. Do you wear any particular garb other than normally what you're wearing tonight? Yes. You do? Would this yes. be considered a uniform of some kind? No. What was the question? I missed it. A uniform. Would it be some kind of a uniform? Well, now, wait, let, me have, a, let me have a small conversation. Oh, I knew this was coming. Sure. <laughs> Johnny, I think we have to give you a no. That actually, in ordinary street clothes, the, uh, such as Miss Proxy is wearing now, could not be worn. But it is not a uniform which would I identify in any degree the occupation. Miss Francis? If one were to avail oneself of your services, uh, Miss Proxy, 
Uh, would you come to the house to be able to uh, take care of those services? No. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Ms. Proxer, before we go into this, you are studying. May I ask where you are doing your studies? At North Hagerstown High School. High school? Yes. That's even young for Mr. Daly. <laughs> uh, Ms. Proxer... Uh, I should like to point out that it was not Mr. Daly who was asking the leading questions. <laughs> Mr. Sir. Ms. Proxer, this uniform, which is not really a uniform that you wear, is that worn for some protective pur purpose or to keep you clean or to keep you from uh, getting messed up? No. No. It's three down and seven to go. It's still not recognizable. No, actually, it's, matter, it's a matter of convenience, Better, It has no purpose to protect her against damage or harm of any kind, nor necessarily any purpose to, to maintain a state of cleanliness, of, of which I'm sure you would approve in any and all circumstances. It's just it's, it's good garb for what has to be done. Thank you, John. That's perfectly all right. You know, no hair but lots of brains. That's Bennett sir, all the time. Miss Kilgallen. Well, I've got to stick with this uniform or costume a little bit more. Do you wear anything in the nature of slacks or pants of any kind? Yes. Oh. Um, I also would like to straighten out Johnny's question, that double question. I didn't understand whether she said yes to moving around a lot or staying in one place. Well, I think that we could best clarify this issue by saying that while you perform your service in one location, it could also be said that there is some degree of movement involved in the normal offering of the service. Um, is, the, is your your work physical as well as mental? Yes. Would you say it was more physical than mental? Yes. Are there men doing what you do? Yes. Uh, do you ever get up on a ladder? No. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Carr. Do you talk at all to the people? Yes. You do. Do you lay your hands upon them? Sometimes. Was you going to say something, John? Or, uh... Well, actually, uh, <laughs> I was actually, looked... Johnny. I was pondering whether I should should add a word so that you weren't misled. The laying on of hands uh, could be necessary as a part of demonstration. You know, in I other see. words, it would have as its purpose to helpfully instruct. I see. Um, do the people who come to you wear anything other than what they would normally wear? You mean a business suit if it was a yes, man? Yes, but they wear some slacks or change uh, their clothes. Yes. Mm -hmm. is, this a, is this a beneficial service? Do the people go away feeling a little better after they've seen you? <laughs> I know I would. <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of question you always have to say, we hope so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it just has to do with health. Sometimes, yes. It has aspects which certainly could be related to the issue of health. Do you need any type of training? Has that been established? Uh, no. To yes. do what you do. You do need yes. some type of training. Do you need any type of degree at all? Do you have to get no. licensed by the state? That's five down and five to go, Miss Francis. I'm going to give you one more minute. Is there something sporting in what you do? Yes. Um, would it be in the family of... Uh, uh, not physical education, but a kind of thing like jujitsu or, or judo or anything like that that would require calisthenics. Yes. Well, uh, you're kind. You're kind. Yeah. Arlene didn't mention any specific area which I think we can fundamentally relate. Huh? No. There we are. That's a good girl. Six down and four to go, Mr. Well, now, is there any game involved in what you're teaching? Besides no. The no. That's seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. But there is something in the realm of gymnastics or athletics of some sort. Yes. Uh, is it uh, something other than karate? Yes. Other than judo and yes. other than jujitsu? Yes. Is it simple gymnastics? Do you teach uh, reducing or gymnastic tricks? No. Not or as no. Tumbling. Not well, it's, it's not gymnastics. We can't accept that uh, description. Uh, uh, I flip all the cards because Bennett gave it away and it wasn't his turn to ask a question and therefore it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, Bennett has got it right. Uh, Ms. Proxy is a trampoline instructor. Uh, <laughs> and we 
I didn't mean to jump the gun. I thought you said time was up. You said a minute more. And, uh... No, I, oh, Bennett, I was just, I was just kidding. Actually, it was, oh, it was kiss good. Oh, Dorothy up. opened the door, and it just progressively, <laughs> you, you, you got to what it was. You work at a place called Bounce Land. Isn't that a wonderful oh, name? Bounce Land in Hagerstown. And one thing that the question didn't elicit that I think will be interesting to all of you at home, uh, about 95% of your clientele are youngsters, aren't they? Yeah. She teaches youngsters how to use the trampoline, and it's great exercise. I used to do a lot of it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed Thank your visit you. to What's My Line. It was nice to have you with us. Happy thought for a spring evening. I'd love to get Bennett on a trampoline. No, I really wouldn't. Let's meet our next contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Well, it's our turn. Jim. Cook. Right, sir? <laughs> Jim, where are you from? Dallas. Dallas, Texas. Ah, yeah. oh, it was nice to have you with us. Uh, may I present our panel? Cook from Texas, from Dallas. Now, will you join me over here, please, sir? You know how we keep score, Jim? Yeah. All right, if you know how we keep score, we'll let the audience at home and the audience in the theater know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> panel, Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook is salaried. He deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with, uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Mr. Cook, are you an executive? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Carson. Well, Mr. Cook's a pretty good-looking, rugged guy, which I suppose has nothing to do with what he really does. Uh, it is a service? Mm-hmm. Service available to both men and women? Yes. Uh, is one sex more predominantly the people you deal with? No. No, I don't think so. To the degree here that the service is utilized by general population, we would have to agree that one sex does not necessarily benefit more than another. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. I don't care what you say, John. Women would benefit more. <laughs> um, Boy, there's a lot of spring in this panel tonight. Isn't there? <laughs> Do you use your hands in your work, Mr. Cook? Partly. Mm -hmm. Do you work out of doors? Yes. In a manner of speaking, yes. <laughs> Manner of speaking. Wait a minute, because let me let me have a small. Right. Mm. No. <laughs> yeah, we have to say in a manner of speaking because I think the question is asked in terms of beyond the confines of a normal building. We would have to say yes. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have anything to do with uh, animals in any way? No. No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Cook, we haven't established whether or not you work for a profit-making organization. Uh, I'd like to guess that you work for a non-profit-making organization. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, in the course of your work, do you ever have occasion to wear a uniform? Small thing. Well, here, uh, actually, Jim has answered the question. It's a special rig, but not necessarily uniform. I would like to explain that we use the term uniform very broadly, so that with your permission, we'll give Bennett a, a yes. It's, it is a special rig, Bennett, but not confined specifically to identify... May I uniform. eliminate, therefore, any kind of military uniform? Yes. Would this uh, work bring you ever in contact with oil wells or anything to do with oil? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you ever get off the ground? Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you some type of pilot? Some type. Do you qualify as a test pilot? No. No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Carson. A type of pilot. But not, in the but not, in the, not of the military. Right. Mm -hmm. Actually, we identified the fact of, of uh, Mr. Cook's being a pilot. Now, what you really have to do is to find out in what particular service he does fly. Would this be for, the, for the, some form of the federal government? Yes. Uh, does it have to do with anything lighter than air aircraft? No. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. You didn't just make a trip in three hours or two hours and something to Paris, sir. 
No. You're not part of that outfit. Seven down and three to Mr. go, Mr. Clark, Sir. Have you got anything to do with conservation or improving farmlands or flying in the air to look at flood control or weather or something of that department? Pretty broad it's question. pretty broad. I think the question is so broad, you know, we'd have to agree that we've got to say yes, it covers so much he ground. He flies into the eye of a cyclone. Isn't well, I want to ask, has weather got something? If you do something about the weather? This is the... Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. It's all <laughs> Yes. Do you uh, ever seed clouds or do something about causing rain or preventing it? No. No. Eight down and two to go, but this is remarkable. You're to be congratulated, panel. Miss Kilgallen. Do you, do you report on or predict weather for other craft? Occasionally. There's some name for that? Well, I tell you what, I'm going to turn <laughs> all the cards... Yeah. Is there something... Yeah. Are there people that fly the into, the, into the eye of a cyclone? Well, that, to this find is why I'm going to throw the computer. You have it, and I think you ought to get full credit for getting it. It's a remarkable job. What Mr. Cook does actually is to track tornadoes by airplane. He is with the, with the Weather Bureau in the Department of Commerce, and he works in that whole southwest area that is, is, is tornado country. Uh, I think you could best describe it. That you're, you're up, and if you find them, you report the track that the storm is taking so that communities get as much a warning of what's uh, about ah. to, to happen. That's uh, part of it, uh, John. It's uh, weather research, uh, severe storm research, actually. Uh, tornadoes and squall lines. Mr. Cook, what's the difference between a tornado and a hurricane? The size, the uh, tornado is probably a few hundred feet across, and a uh, hurricane can be several hundred miles. And when you haven't got one of those going for you, what do you do? <laughs> well, it just goes on all the time. Honey. Actually, the, uh, the specific outfit with which you work is what? Like severe? It's the cell, Severe Local Storm Forecast Center in Kansas City. Severe Local Storm Forecast Center in uh -huh. Kansas City. Called, it's called Cells, and it's, it's, um, it's research and reporting on, on the storms that are, that are in being and the track that they're taking and so forth. Well, we hope you enjoyed being with us yeah. down here on good, solid terra firma. Nice to have had you with Thank us. You. Will you take a nice time? <laughs> we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which the panel is always blindfolded. The blindfolds in place panel? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Will you enter Mystery Challenger and sign in, please? As you know, in this case, you go to a different form of questioning, one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. We begin with uh, Bennett Cerf. Well, judging by your reception, you're one of those hurricanes that uh, the gentleman <laughs> chases. Uh, are you a beautiful lady? I will answer that with a resounding yes. <laughs> Mr. Gallon? Are you uh, currently appearing in person in New York? Are you appearing in person in New York? You mean in the legitimate theater or supper or club? Supper or club or night club. Presentation house or anything like that? Yes. Mm -hmm. No. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Carson. Are you busy tonight? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, I'll try another tack then. She's going out with that tack. Uh, are you here, are you currently appearing in a motion picture that is uh, in the New York area? Yes. Ms. Francie? Well, if you're here for a motion picture, there has been a great deal of publicity about a very beautiful lady from across the seas that is here to make appearances for what I understand is a pri an award-winning picture called Two Women. Do you have anything to do with that particular picture? Yes. Right. Well, my deepest congratulations <laughs> to a beautiful actress, Sophia Loren. Right. Oh. <laughs> 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 
You mustn't be discouraged because, unfortunately, my colleagues over there are brilliant at this yeah. game oh, of what's my life. Incredible. We, we I was know. trying to put on some accent, but I didn't succeed in that. Miss Lauren, you are so popular that everybody in New York knew you were in New York, and oh, we felt you. that You're if we were nice. lucky, we'd have you on this show. That's all. Thank you. I think it should go in the record that Arlene has, has mentioned the uh, film, which is at a New York theater, the Sutton Theater, Two Women, for which. Uh, Miss Loren won the Gold Palm Award as the Best Actress at the Cannes Film Festival. An honor that uh, I'm quite sure pleased you mightily, but one that also was uh, very properly given to you. Oh, thank you very much. Well, I'm MGM sorry we didn't... isn't it, Miss Loren? MGM? No, Joe Levine is um, releasing it here in America, in New York, but in England, the Metro Goldie Mayer has the picture. Mm -hmm. Yes, Dorothy? John, I've seen it, and I can testify that it's a marvelous performance. The oh, best thanks. of her career and the best of any actress this year that I've seen. Uh, thank you. Wonderful. And thank you very much, ma'am, for thank spending you. some time with us. Thank you. We have a, another contestant after this word from our alternate sponsor. And now let's meet a final contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Andy? Perret. Right? Right. Yeah. Where are you from? Cedar Grove, New Jersey. Cedar Grove, New Jersey. May I present the panel? Are Ready? You? Will you join me over here? You know how we keep score, Andy? Yes, sir. All right, then fine. We'll let the audience here and the audience at home know what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel, we don't have too much time, so I will tell you very quickly that Mr. Peretti is salaried, that he deals in a product, and we'll begin the general questioning with um, Arlene Francis. Mr. Peretti, is it a product that I might use? Yes, ma'am. Would I enjoy using it? Definitely. Uh, <laughs> would the rest of us on the panel also use it? Yes, ma'am. Would I use it indoors? Yes, ma'am. Would I use it in any particular room of the house? Usually. Would that room be the kitchen? Possibly. Would I just as soon use it in another room, perhaps? The bedroom, could it be used in? Not particularly. <laughs> Not particularly, but under some circumstances it might be what we were trying it's to... It's a get-around product. It's a get-around product, yes. <laughs> could I hold it in my hand? No. No. Uh, wait a minute now, because here we get a little bit involved. The product, in terms of your potential use of it, would have now a character which in some instances would make yes. it possible to hold it in the hand. So yes. you proceed. Uh, would I apply it to anything? No. No. You mean rub it in? It'd be pretty silly. <laughs> One down tonight to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Pretty, has the product that you deal with at any time been alive? Yes. Uh, is it uh, either animal or bird? Yes. <laughs> Good. He's not going to have any trouble with you. Uh, all right, bird. No. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Is it animal? Yes. Uh, has it been a domestic animal? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Cuff. This is some type of wild animal that once was alive. Yes. And ran into trouble. Uh, <laughs> would you use this, say, in the living room of the house? No. No, I think we would have to give you a flat yeah. no on that. This does not rule out the possibility under very special circumstances it might be used, sure. but you wouldn't yeah. normally expect to. Yeah. Miss Francis. Yeah. But it is not an animal that we eat, evidently. Yes. That makes it five dollars. Oh, it is an go, animal we Sir. eat. Oh, you don't rub it in, you swallow it. Ah. Oh. <laughs> we just <laughs> ran out of time. And that's a wonderful uh, note to run out of time on. Actually, like Mr. Peretti buys turtles, you know, the big turtles, oh. which are then rendered into turtle soup and turtle stew and, and turtles. You know, turtles. So, <laughs> well, there we are. It's actually the, what, the bon, bon Vivant... Bon Vivant Soup Company. Bon Vivant Soup Company. So most of it goes into that wonderful turtle soup. Thank you very much, sir, Thank for being our guest. It was nice to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you.
very quickly, because we're short of time, if you'd like to apply to puzzle the panel with your occupation, send a snapshot, one that you can spare. Name, occupation, and send this information to What's My Line, CBS 485 Madison Avenue, New York 22, New York. And now we're short of time for the panel and for me. Uh, thank you very much for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Cotman.